Hi there. In this video, I'll be unboxing the iPivo DoCam Visualizer. It has a beautiful design, but how does it actually perform? Let's find out. So the first thing to notice is that the iPivo DoCam is small, a fraction of the size of the last visualizer I looked at, the AverVision U50. When you open the box, you'll find the DoCam itself inside a padded cover about the size of a pencil case, held together with an elastic band. The quality of the cover could be better, but it should protect the DoCam from all but the hardest of knocks, and given that most visualizers are supplied without covers, it's a welcome addition. As you can see here, setup's very straightforward. Just lift the arm by pulling on the camera lift handle and then raise the body away from the base, like so. Once you've unraveled the built-in USB cable, plug it into your computer and you're ready to go. The DoCam has only one button, which is pressed when you want to flip the image when moving between document camera and webcam mode. Without it, you'd appear upside down in the Zoom call, Teams meeting or the likes. There's no built-in microphone and no lights to illuminate your subject. Before we see it in action, here's a quick rundown of some of the technical details. The DoCam's camera has an impressive resolution of 8 megapixels, meaning it can output images up to 3264 by 2448 pixels. The minimum focus distance, as far as I could work out, was around 6.5 centimetres, which means you can get in nice and close to your subject without blurring the image. It can output up to 30 frames per second and has a maximum capture area of 354 by 266 millimetres, which is somewhere between an A4 and an A3 sheet of paper. It weighs in at just 355 grams, which, together with its small size, will make it ultra-portable. And it should set you back about £129. If you want to use your DoCam with third-party software like Zoom, Teams Meeting or the Camera app, then it's best to first install iPivo Cam Control so that you can lock in the exposure and white balance settings as well as focusing mode. I like to use the manual focus when making notes on a piece of paper so that the writing is always nice and sharp rather than the visualizer focusing on my hand. So with Cam Control installed on your computer, you can expect a clear, focused image like the one you see here. The DoCam really comes into its own when using its own dedicated software, Visualizer from iPivo. Again, I chose to use manual focus, and again, everything was crisp and clear, as you'd expect given its 8 megapixel sensor. The software allows you to take snapshots, as well as videos, adding annotations as you go. It also allows you to stream live to YouTube, although this isn't a feature I've tested, and I'd probably use different software such as OBS to do this anyway. The Visualizer software also allows you to take slow motion videos as well as time lapse recording and stop motion recording, which I decided to try out. I don't imagine it's a feature that I'd use very much when teaching, either in class or online, but some people will find it useful as well as a lot of fun. This is me trying to recreate a scene from a popular 90s sitcom. I'm sure you can guess which one. And to make it more realistic, I decided to up the production values for greater effect. Another feature you might have a use for is text-to-speech. Let's see how it gets on reading my new favourite book on Robot Sumo. The right wheel for your robot though wheeled robots are most commonly used, and in good wheels is often a difficult tar.sk for the beginning. And even the expert, robot builder. You can also magnify part of the subject you're viewing, which could come in handy when you want to zoom in on a selected part of it. You're also able to highlight part of the image or mask all but a single line, which might be handy when reading a book, magazine or document. Finally, you can scan QR codes or barcodes or select part of a document in order to scan it and output your selection as a PDF document. So the software that comes with the DoCam certainly isn't short in features. Now, I'm always keen to see how good a job the bundled software does with recording, as you might want to use it to produce your own YouTube videos. Here's a recording I made with the DoCam and Visualizer app on PC. I've got voltage is 10 volts as across a resistor, current in the circuit is 2 amps. Using ohms of, using ohms of, of is equal to IR. Rearranging by dividing both sides by I, I get R is equal to V over I, which is 10 over 2 is 5 ohms. So we're certainly not getting 30 frames per second and the audio quality isn't great, making it sound like I'm speeding up and slowing down. For better results, I'd use the OBS app, remembering to adjust your image with iPivo's cam control first. Let's see the results this time. So I'm going to say that the voltage across the resistor is 10 volts. 
Let's see the current in the circuit. What will we go for? We'll go for two amps. And therefore, we've then got to use Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, in order to work at the resistance. So basically, what I'll do is I'll take this equation, divide both sides. Now, remember that the Ducam doesn't have a built-in microphone, so your audio might not be of the same quality. I'm using the Rode Video Micro on a Mac, and I set the Ducam to manual focus using cam control. The Visualizer app is very impressive then, although I did experience problems when trying to record with it, causing the app to crash sometimes. There is a workaround using OBS if you need to make recordings and hopefully the issue with the Visualizer app will be sorted soon. What you're seeing on screen now is me testing the minimum focus distance of the Ducam, which I found to be around about six and a half centimeters. This allows you to get in close to your subject without having to resort to using the digital zoom. And you can see here how easy it is to add annotations. In conclusion then, the IPVO Ducam is a beautifully designed, highly portable visualizer that's quick to set up. There's no built-in microphone, which might put off some people, and no built-in lights, although the image quality was very good without them. For use with third-party software, you'll want to use the cam control software to first adjust the image and select the best focusing mode so that the Ducam isn't focus hunting. The Visualizer app was great apart from the record function, on PC at least, but using OBS allowed me to produce good quality videos. Overall, there's certainly enough positives to make me want to try it out when teaching after the summer holidays. Hopefully by that time, the little niggles in the software will be ironed out and I'll produce another video to show how I get on. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. If your experience of the IPVO Ducam is different to mine, then why not tell me in the comments section as well. See you next time.